Tech Heart Homes. We fabricate your dreams as real. Fabricated villas, resorts, residential homes, hotels, QSR outlets, commercial places. We blend most sophisticated technology and art. Do any arms to the nature. At the same time, contribute new petals to the serenity of nature. Fabricated house should last over 100 years. And in this respect, by no means, worse off than conventionally built house. We offer completion in 100 days, 25 years of construction warranty, 30% cost reduction, 50% materials are reusable, painting with putty work, UPVC windows, branded wires and other accessories. You can dream, we can make it possible. Take heart homes.
Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, thank you. We will wait for two, two, three minutes more. No problem. Minutes. no problem. I will wait. homes. We fabricate your dreams as real. Fabricated villas, resorts, residential homes, hotels, QSR outlets, commercial places. We blend most sophisticated technology and art. Do any arts to the nature. At the same time, contribute new petals to the serenity of nature. Fabricated house should last over 100 years. And in this respect, by no means, we're so often conventionally built house. We offer completion in 100 days, 25 years of construction warranty, 30% cost reduction, 20% materials are reusable, painting with putty work, UPVC windows, branded wires and other accessories. You can dream, we can make it possible. Take heart homes. Good evening all. Uh, all are welcome to day three of NOVA webinar series. Myself, Sridag, are from GEC Trishur. NOVA is a um, collaborative venture future space and strategy for leading colleges of three, uh, states, which include GEC Trishur, CT Trivandrum, MSAE Kodamangalam, GEC Idukki, GEC Kannur, and NSS pilot card. Now we are celebrating the third edition of NOVA convention include all the online series of events from March 26 to 30. Now I would like to in invite Pad Padmasri, Yana Gandhi Vastan sir. Uh, he is the vice president of at Root Aerospace. Narendra Master Sir is an Indian rocket scientist known as pioneering of cryogenic rocket science in India. A graduate in mechanical engineering from the Chakrasri College of Engineering, Madurai. Uh, uh, Sir had started his uh, career by joining Indian Space Research Corporation in 19 and held many positions such as project director and program director at ISRO. He served as a program director at uh, Pyrogenic System, Project Liquid Propulsion System, uh, Sanders, etc. I sure that today's session is going to be very informative and you all will be able to take good something from this. Now, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Was the and and the uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Sir, you may start the session now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, it is a great honor and uh, pleasure for me to participate this uh, space club is called NOVA 3 
maybe 3.0 i don't know what is the meaning of that well uh, always it is good to interact with the youngsters those who are having uh, you know to enquire more about space and other things enthusiastic about it generally whenever even young age when we come out and see the sky uh, you no know, there are a lot of stars and we don't know whether which is the end so the quest is always there to explore what is there in space maybe same way i was also from a <coughs> small village a dry, very dry place in uh, tamil nadu so i did my engineering 1963 to 68 uh, five years course those days uh maybe in 68 the country was in a very bad shape because of the chinese aggression so no job so we were all searching even though there are very few engineering students nearly about only 2000 students at that time from uh, tamil nadu still we don't have job to get so one day i saw sstc uh, something propulsion you know, technical assistant so i applied i got a call so maybe first time i am entering into kerala and from a very dry place to a greenery <laughs> you know god own country they call it uh, maybe it's a very scenic uh, country so i entered in the early morning when the train enters into koilan the koilan to trivandrum the journey itself is very pleasant with lot of uh, you know uh, coconut trees and all those things those days trivandrum also like a small town so uh, those days very famous uh, restaurant is uh, gandhi hotel so i stayed there nearby patnama swami temple i stayed there i went there and the step i tried to see uh, bedding woman diagram this that tomorrow i don't know what is the question they will ask so i went to for the interview and maybe i i used to tell every this thing maybe my num lucky number is 4 it looks like so one of the committee member asked uh, radiation is equal to prof what i said 4 i got selected so later only i came to know the person who asked the question is uh, dr kalam well i uh, i have not joined in his group but i joined in dr a muthunai in the propulsion group very few people those days maybe i met with the 8th or 9th engineer joined in propulsion in 1968 so it is near tumba i think most of you may be in trivandrum and other places may be knowing it's a seashore and uh, the area was taken by evacuating lot of fisher uh, uh, community so i have been asked to give a small tiled house very small uh, maybe occupied by some of the families uh, maybe by 3 by 4 uh, a tiled one so we they kept a small oven so there is a small uh, old bread making mixture so we have to prepare the solid propellant well uh, very interesting first time itself joining itself i started with the preparation of the uh, propellant very interestingly i am not got it uh, we, we we started with uh, maybe i will show you some of the uh, pictures also so that it will be easy for your uh, uh, this one one minute last 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 ah no what is there yeah okay are you seeing my screen hello yes yes sir yeah yes sir okay thank you presentation mode is it their uh, presentation mode are you seeing now yes sir okay one minute
one minute one minute some minor <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> we started those days uh, with uh, solid rocket so when we were uh, preparing the solid propellant in the small room so nearby there is a small road and then seashore so those days uh, very interestingly you know some few families were living also so the evening time i used to see some ladies they will come and uh, dig a small pit put the kids inside and put the sand up the neck then they will do all uh, regular uh, homework for them cleaning the parts and other things then after some time all the ladies will sit around the kit and remove the sand and this is one of our uh, evening <laughs> like those days no tv so by watching this we will make uh, solid propellant and other things so those days i started with uh, 50 dia 200 millimeter length maybe about 50 gram is the only the propellant so it is uh, uh, because in kerala we have uh, rubber so anything you know solid propellant we requires one fuel and the oxidizer both should be in the solid form so we collect the rubber and mix it with ammonium percolate and cure it in the oven so now whenever i take the small uh, 50 dia this one lot of small small blow holes so i don't know what to do as an young engineer like you i thought i'll put on both sides uh, two plates and tighten it very tightly i put it in the oven nearly about six or seven small rockets i put it for curing luckily it was 11 o'clock so i have to walk a kilometer to go to matai shop to eat so i started walking on the sand you believe it or not a very big explosion in the tiled house so everybody was stunned and people ran away and all those things and we came the oven is fully ripped open and not not it's like a sheet so i could see wherever small small pipes whatever i have kept so that is my first uh, explosion or accident maybe because a lot of things i have done yeah later also so seeing that first i understood what is energy okay second the propellant tried to expand i didn't allow to expand i put a two plate so that's why it uh, blasted so immediately mechanical engineer so i put two springs on both sides and tighten next time another uh, oven no problem it went well so like that i started learning the you know solid propellant how it has to be done so rubber based so saraba used to come and review those days we call it rh 75 100 and rh 125 and rh 300 and what you are seeing is rh 200 plus rh 100 uh, uh, two stage uh, small sounding rocket so rh 75 well you may ask why it is 75 100 and 125 other things so nearest uh, trivandrum in the industrial town is uh, ernakulam there is a uh, aluminium extrusion uh, plant they have a die for 75 dia 100 dia and 125 dia so whatever the tube available we purchased and bring it here and cut it and put it and then loading the propellant so loading the propellant is my job uh, so mr group he was in charge for the propellant uh, uh, you know manufacturing and r and work at the other side they give me the propellant and load it in the rs75 and then we fly so our own propellant with rubber base when we made and we tested and i still remember sarabai came like this one of the small launcher we put the our own rs75 in the launcher itself it exploded well these are all the part of first starting time so we have a lot of failures then kalam was um, uh, having one project is called the manaha that is rh100 so that is also pvc based propellant and uh, we I, I was in charge for charging so we loaded the propellant and we take it to the same same uh, launcher if i am correct so we not same this is uh, sri ricotta of course what uh, i was telling is in uh, uh, tumba itself so we launched the rh100 it took off from the launcher and immediately it fell down into the sea and within few seconds it came up again and it was flying again in the air so we used to say kalam is a bachelor this managa is dancing in front of him so we make a lot of those days and whenever the rocket leaves the launch pad 
we call it success. We don't know whether how much kilometer reaches and all those things is not our business. Our work is over once it leaves. Slowly, we build up 100 and these are all the uh, uh, small rockets. So you could see RH200 and RH300 also. So we have taken these rockets to Sri Kota and then we launched from there. And uh, maybe later, our government is very, you know, we don't want to spend more money. The requirements are very clear. One is a remote sensing satellite, which should be around 700, 600 to 700 kilometers, as close as to the Earth. And uh, to watch or to get data from the Earth. So for that, we require a satellite to be put around 700 kilometers. 600 to 700 kilometer so that will pass over our land and we can take photographs there will be a very big electronic eye and it will catch us maybe it can be used for seashore erosion or uh, even uh, fishing people uh, you know normally we used to now also we used to i think it's so used to give uh, uh, kind of in seashore people you go in this direction you will get fish because the satellite will take because generally the fishes like we you like a biryani these fishes like the algae the algae is in green color and the satellite will take if the floating of algae is very high in one direction we will say you go in this direction fish will be more okay it is almost like 80 to 90 percent success so we still follow the same trend so like that if you want to watch maybe for your cargill war or, or, or the bottle all those things this remote sensing satellite is very very important so for that, uh, okay, we started uh, working. Before that, we have to work. Uh, we cannot go to the biggest rocket. So we started with uh, SLV, <coughs> Satellite Launch Vehicle, one, two, like that. Kalam was the lead. And uh, it is a four-stage solid motor. The fourth stage was, uh, you know, propellant was uh, filled. And uh, there was, again, a big blowhole. So Kalam and uh, uh, Kurup and they all came to the lab and he, they asked, we want to recover the motor case. Can you remove the propellant? I said, fine. I, I, I have a lot of uh, our own technicians are there. So we started very difficult one. So through the throat itself, we put the hand and the pierced to small, small propellant chunks and removed it. And we made it to two halves and everybody came and appreciated. The next day, I'm supposed to clear the hardware, but still small, small propellant uh, were sticking to the casing. So morning 8, 8.30, I came and I gave instruction, you remove this chunk also, and then we will give it to for further processing. At that time, maybe it is a luck, still I am talking to you. There was a phone call in my room, so I went. Within a few, maybe I say minute, the whole hall, exploded a lot of rockets i kept inside like rh100 125 and so many propellants everything got burnt and flying this and that i thought my technician three fellows i have given the work might have perished but luckily they also fly on one direction onto the far into the seaside and i was also running and crying well they made a letter it is a whole building was burnt that was my second uh, uh, experience and uh, very big uh, explosion then there was a committee and they asked uh, what happened and i i cried <laughs> in fact and then they said if you do what problems can come but be careful in future with that i started my career uh, later also and uh, Government, after the uh, SL, SLV success and other things, all of you know that, these are all the two, one more vehicle, as I said, the remote sensing. Other requirement is synchronous. Always the satellite should be above you, maybe 36,000 kilometer. If you put any object, the speed is equivalent to surface speed of the Earth. So in whatever you put there, it will be always above you. So for our communication and our TV and all those things, a synchronous satellite is a requirement. So in these two, first and two is the requirement. So we don't want to like Americans or Russians, many engines and many rockets and many things. 
so we concentrate only PSLV first. So PSLV, uh, you know, all of you, first stage is a solid, second stage is liquid, third stage is solid, and fourth stage is again liquid. So when the SLV is a success at that time, uh, maybe I will tell people one or two important things. Since I am your propulsion man, so this is uh, in Malayalam, you call it uh, Kadawa. So it takes water and the expel on the backside for the movement. So this is the fundamental principle of uh, propulsion. When the rocket expels the hot gas, the rocket moves forward. So I used to show uh, this one. So today, mainly the rockets, what we are using is all uh, chemical propulsion. So we use the chemical energy, so solid, liquid, and uh, hybrid. Solid, both, uh, you know, very well, anything to burn, you require a fuel and oxidizer. Both are in solid form. In liquid, both are in liquid form. In hybrid, one is liquid, one is solid. Of course, nuclear and solar, we have not done much, little bit. Maybe towards the end, I will show you one or two few graphs. So solid, lot of advantage because uh, good performance, easy to handle, and uh, ready to you know, uh, fire. So most of the missiles, you might have minute man and all, polarized, all these things are solid, even including our uh, Agni, so that it will be readily available anytime we can launch. So that is the advantage. But liquid means you have to fill and all those things. It will take time. By the time, a lot of uh, things may happen. So this is uh, one uh, interesting small solid motor I was uh, working. Uh, this is, a, if you want to calibrate any missile, especially surface to air missile, we will launch a, a missile. It will go and hit the aircraft. But to calibrate, every time we cannot send the aircraft and fire, because the aircraft may be about a, uh, 10, uh, 20 crore or 30 crore or 40 crore. So we cannot spend that much money. So they will make a dummy aircraft. A mother aircraft will carry the dummy aircraft and drop it at three or four kilometer altitude and the mother aircraft will fly off. So the dummy, your aircraft should have some propulsion system to fly off its own. For that, those days in 1972 or 73, if I'm correct, they asked uh, Israel, can you develop a burning motor with a booster? So I was the lead for this one those days, and uh, I have developed this uh, end burning motor along with the uh, Mr. Krupp was in charge for uh, propellant this thing. So uh, this was very successfully demonstrated by ADE those days. Then at the same time, and there was one more requirement. Generally, the enemies they will uh, destroy our uh, runways. Once the aircraft uh, runways are uh, out, then you, all your aircraft will become dummy, it cannot uh, take off. So generally what they will do is they will attach a rocket on the belly of the aircraft so that without the runway, the aircraft can take off and then it can go for fight and it can go to some other uh, airfield to get out. So this motor, Kalam was the lead. And I was also, because the loading the propellant, I was in charge. So we made nearly about 100 aircraft, 100 rockets, and tested in, uh, uh, in ground. And even one or two we have taken to Nasik to uh, go for yeah. low temperature and high temperature testing and all those things, it passed. Finally, we have taken seven rocket. This is having a slightly inclined nozzle also. Take it to Roy Braley. I think Indira Gandhi constituency in North India. There, uh, there is a, uh, you are uh, one of the Air Force base. They have uh, HF-24 aircraft those days. So I was also one of the member. We went there. We attached this uh, rocket to the belly of the aircraft. Well, <clears throat> next day is supposed to take off. Kalam also supposed to come in the early morning. So. As usual, I used to talk a little more. So in the air base, uh, air base uh, uh, night, you know, the club, we were all eating. So I was uh, openly telling, I don't know who is the pilot who is sitting 
tomorrow in the aircraft. So within few se seconds, somebody tapped on my back. Then he said, I am the pilot. A Singh was standing. So immediately I shouted, my rocket is so good. I have done so many tests. Nothing will happen. So he was laughing. Let us see tomorrow. So next day, you believe it or not, the takeoff was very nice. Without the runway, the aircraft took uh, very nicely. So Kalam went to uh, Delhi. We went to Nainital to enjoy. So like that, these are all the few of my uh, participation in solid rocket motor. So in addition to that, in solid, uh, I said initially we use uh, oxidizer as uh, ammonium perchlorate and polymeric binder like those days only PVC. Then only we got into uh, p bond and HTPB and other uh, uh, binders. So solid motor, the performance can be improved by adding some metallic fuel like aluminum powder. So I am, I said I am from uh, near Madurai. So there is a aluminum powder company very close to Madurai. So I said I will go and check whether they have a metallic uh, aluminum powder. So I went there and they asked what for you come. I said I, we are making rocket fuel. We require some. He said how much you can carry five kg? Okay, you carry five kg free. If it is good, later we can buy and buy it. So first time. I brought the aluminum powder from metal powder company from Madurai to Trivandrum. We mixed it. Well, the ISP has increased almost like five to six seconds more. So everybody was very happy. So this is also one of uh, my this thing. So later, I think polymeric binder. Now currently, so themselves they are making hydroxy terminated polybutadiene and the polybutadiene acrylic. P bond is the one. Uh, uh, you might have already heard about the space shuttle solid boosters. They used only polybutadiene acrylic. Now, currently, we use uh, HTPB and CTPB for our uh, rocket motor uh, propellants. And sorry. And uh, the motor case is also very important. Unlike uh, liquid, maybe we'll go to that. Solid motor, the whole chamber is under pressure. So the metal, the casing has to withstood the high pressure, maybe nearly about 60 bar or 70 bar. So if you uh, use very normal material, the thickness for that pressure will be very high. So we have to select a good material. Initially, French people, they offered for RS300, they've called 15 CDV6, it's a low carbon alloy, which has the highest strength to those days. Then comes uh, Americans uh, D6 AC, then marauding steel, this is the one of the best uh, material. So our uh, metallurgist, BSSC, they developed this maraging steel for our RH125 uh, and RH200. Now currently, all are working with uh, maraging steel. And of course, fiber class is also having a very good uh, this thing. Here, one interesting thing is called specific strength. That is, strength divided by the specific gravity or the density of the material is very important. The weight should be limited. So fiberglass, if you take, there's the lowest. And the carbon now currently, where I am working in Skyroot also, we made first our rocket also with the carbon T600. So that is the lowest specific gravity and the highest strength. So maybe we will see a little later. So this is the third stage motor. This is the fiberglass. Those days, the Kalam was making the motor casing and other things in his facility. For solid motor, we require an igniter to ignite the charge and these are all the so we have a pyrotechnic uh, lab a lot of people are working on that and this is the PSLV strap on motor a slightly inclined so you could see the center port and it is having five segments a six segment uh, number so this is very successfully tested first and uh, I said I started with a small motor like uh, 50 dia now people can go inside it is now 2.5 meter 3 meter 4 meter like that it has come so what you are seeing is the casing. Somebody has gone inside and they are insulating because the propellant, when it burns, any flame comes, it should not puncture the metal. So they have given uh, uh, this uh, this one. And uh, you could see this is the RH-125, first group when he was there in Shar. He first motor after the, they were casted, they called me. Because I started from the beginning, so they asked to check 
So you believe it or not, the, through the port, a little bit I went inside and checked whether any crack is there or not. This is the star shape one. Maybe you might have already studied why star and all those things because the surface area has to be uni uh, not uniform. Maybe there will be control. Otherwise, if it is only cylinder, the surface area will progressively increase and then where the thrust will go high and it is very difficult. So this is the latest S200 which is the biggest engine, 200 ton solid propellant, which is carrying now day for yesterday or yesterday, you might have seen the flight, uh, Mark III, SLV. So two strap-ons, this is the S200 only, it was fired first on from the ground to lift off uh, your, uh, this one. So we used to do one or two ground test to check whether all the system, grind design, nozzle, igniter, and motor case, everything is good or not. So these facilities are all at shore. So once our one or two tests are over, then we will clear it for flight. Then later, all the motor case will go for this one. Now let us go a little bit uh, liquid propulsion. When I was telling about uh, SLV, those days uh, our director, Dr. A. Mutanayam, had a good uh, vision. So you may be near. All of you know the uh, Europeans, they have Ariane program. Now Ariane 5 is successfully running. So before that, there is a program is called Eldo that is in Europe. The Eldo program is uh, four countries. They jointly, they were doing that is uh, British, French, Germans and Italians. So the first stage is by British. Second stage is by uh, it, uh, French. Third stage by Germans four stage solid motor by Italian. They fly test, of course, launching is from Australia, Umrang. So they conducted almost like 13 flights. I think all 13 flights failed. So they fought each other. Even you believe it or not, once they didn't, they forgot to put the igniter in the solid rocket motor. That is a kind of uh, coordination between the four countries. So they totally, they closed the Eldo program. Then the French people, they started the Ariane program. At that time, they came and uh, invited our director. They had a discussion. We want some engineers, Indian engineers, to work with us. And we will give sensor technology, like pressure sensor technology to you. You make 1,000, 10,000, 21 NEA pressure sensors to us. We will give the technology also. And again, 100 um, man years, people can work in our program. So everybody has uh, they no uh, money payment nothing it is only a, we went there and stayed and worked for them and uh, we got technology for us so in that team uh, luckily i was also selected so from 1976 to 79 i stayed there in uh, france and those days viking engine today you might have seen pslv second stage and gslv strap-ons and second stage and uh, mark three the center core two vehicles these are all only what we got from france which is called vikas engine there it is called viking engine so i am lucky enough to work because uh, you all may be knowing uh, the modern rocket is developed by the germans by v2 during the second world war there is a big uh, tunnel in uh, munde there is a big uh, uh, mountain one cave there is a big cave one end raw material go the other end v2 rockets will come so that is the way it was done by uh, uh, hitler and it was managed by von braun so once after the second war second world war uh, german was uh, defeated uh, americans they came and they captured all the uh, engineers to them i think uh, apollos the leader von braun is the man who was there in germany and uh, all the technicians are taken by russians and very few people they have come to france one of the engineer is called berger i have a, a opportunity to work with him very interestingly he is the person who built the vikas engine what we are going to see so in liquid engine and solid engine as i already explained you could see fuel and oxidizer. It is, we are all air breathing people, you know. Um, we breathe under uh, all car or anything or trees. We breathe air 
and uh, take the fuel and consume it ourselves and burn it. But above 50 kilometers, there is no air, there is no oxygen. So we have to carry both fuel and oxidizer. So like our petrol tank in car, rocket also is having a petrol tank or a fuel tank. And since oxidizer is not there, we carry oxidizer tank. So we have two tanks. And uh, bottom, you are seeing a combustion chamber or a thrust chamber. And uh, you might have seen in your, uh, your grandmother might have used, you know, uh, wood for burning or now also some people may be using. Then later kerosene and if you use a slightly a pressure, if anything burn under, under pressure, the thermodynamically you can extract more energy. So in rocket, we burn the fuel and oxidizer at very high pressure. Of course, in India, we are nominal pressure only. We are going up to 70 or 80 bar. Of course, Russians and Americans, they have gone up to even uh, 200 bar uh, pressure. So when you are burning at very high pressure, the excess, but when you are burning at 60 bar, we have to inject the propellant, both oxidizer inside. So if you are having a tank, immediately if you are pressurizing more than 60 bar, the tank will be so much thick. So the weight will be so high. So you, the rocket may not take off. So what to do? So they put in between a feed system. A feed system is nothing but a pump. In your house, you may have a electrical, you know, centrifugal pump to power, you know, take the water from ground to your head, in you know, your building top. So similarly here also, we have centrifugal pump. The pump cannot run off its own. So we require a prime mover. But the prime mover, if you, in our house, we will use electric. But there, we may require almost like 10,000 watts per or 6,000 watts per pump. So there is no power available. So we use a turbine. So the turbine and pump combinedly is called turbo pump. So we call it as a feed system. But turbine also may will not run off its own. So we have a gas generator. So the gas generator generates a ga a gas which runs the turbine and it goes out. And then these pumps are running from very low pressure from three bar to four bar from the tank, it pumps out to 60, 70 bar or 80 bar outlet so that we can inject inside the uh, thrust chamber. Maybe I will go a little faster because I, I don't know. These are all the engines we built in LPSE. It starts from one Newton to 735 kilonewton. So what you have seen the 735 kilonewton is the Vikas engine. Uh, we got the technology from France. And uh, I will explain a little bit more. The 75 kilonewton cryo, that is the one I will explain. That is the first day I built that engine. So all other things are satellite requirement and four stage engines. One newton is for uh, uh, <coughs> remote sensing. 22 newton, 50 newton, 440 newton, all are for geosynchronous. And 7.35 is for four stage of PSLB. So, well. Uh, in thrust chamber, the combustion energy is converted from fuel to oxidizer. Chemical energy is converted into thermal energy. So anything conversion, there is an efficiency. So we call it C star here. Then from there, the thermal energy is converted into propulsive energy by, you know, expanding in the nozzle. So it is going to the maximum of VE. So VE is high we should get, maybe. And uh, if you buy a scooter or a car, your friend will ask uh, from per liter how many kilometers it will run. Generally, that is the index you ask. He may say 28 or 40 or 45. A rocket man will ask if I burn 1 kg of propellant, how much thrust it will get. So solid motor, it will may give 280 to 290 and the liquid will give around 300 to 350. And if you go to cryogenic, it may go to 440 to 450. Maybe we will come later about this. So this is the aluminum injector. So like an automizer in our IC engines. So per second, nearly 250 kg of propellant has to be burned in the cost engine. Nearly 110 liters of UDMH and 110 liters of N2O4 is burned inside. So there are about 760 minute holes are drilled. So initially when I fabricate this one, uh, the top dome was sinking like anything. Then later we made a lot of trials and errors and all those things. And finally we could make, and this is the combustion chamber. 
and uh, this is a divergent is a combustion chamber is made out of kc20wn that is a super alloy what is super alloy any alloy any material if you heat above 500 degrees celsius it loses its strength but super alloys will retain its strength so here kc20wn is a cobalt based alloy so we got the technology from france and now Vitani in Hyderabad, they are manufacturing this sheet and currently ISRO is using our own indigenous sheet for that. So it is also a very interesting thing. So this is the turbo pump and you could see N2O4 is entering and UDMH is on the other side. UDMH is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. Any hydrazine family is a good and we call this combination is called hypergolic. What is hypergolic? To any uh, combination of uh, liquid due to exothermic reaction, if it burns, it is called uh, hypergolic. So no igniter is required like a solid rocket motor. So here, these two combination, the touches, it will ignite. It is very dangerous and we are handling for the last so many years. So when it enters, uh, there is a pump and it's a turbine. It's a two-stage turbine, yeah, first stage and uh, uh, stage, and you could see the uh, blades. And this also we fabricated at uh, MTAR Hyderabad, uh, where I am now staying. They are very good uh, precision fabricators, and it was done in 1982-81. I was uh, at the time in fabrication, so I could uh, know all this. So this is the sketch uh, on uh, left-hand side because engine we got it from France. So all uh, you could see the uh, engine is uh, fired at Mahendra Green. And the material, what I said, the KC20WM is getting red hotter and it is gimbal. That's why the nozzle is shifting. On the top, the gas which is coming is from the gas generator which is running the turbine. So the left hand side is the integrated because engine, what we are using it. Once the engine is ready, so we require as a stage, we call it a stage. This is the second stage for the PSLV. So both N2O4 and UDMH are stored in aluminum tank. These aluminum tanks are fabricated at Hachayal, Bangalore. And this is almost like 2.5 meter diameter. And uh, it carries almost like uh, <coughs> uh, 30 ton propellant. And for the ground test, 44 ton also. On the top, there is a helium bottle. And the helium is pressurizing the tank. And the propellant will come and it will work. So you could see one of the uh, long bags. We have done a stage test also at Mahindra Green. And the whole stage is uh, kept and we fired and we checked all the parameters uh, very clearly. These are all done uh, almost like uh, 50 years back, not now. Nowadays, they are not doing this test because already it is proven in the flight. This is very important one engine, uh, PS4. This is the fourth stage. There are two engines are attached on the fourth stage. Here, very interestingly, left side, what you are seeing, the tank is a titanium tank. I said the specific strength of titanium is good because titanium strength is very high. So it is only 1.2 millimeter only wall thickness. The weight is so less. Four stage, we require a very good low, uh, this thing. But the cost of the titanium tank is very high, maybe about 10 crore now. So now slowly they are also changing to aluminum because uh, reduce the cost of the stage. So this is the test of two engines simultaneously they are firing this is the pslv four stage this also died uh, almost like 40 50 years back so let me come to my subject cryogenic a little bit so i worked till 83 or the, we have taken one of the vikas engine to france and tested in that facility and later in our place so it was flying then they started the cryo program so the my boss or the government, they asked me to join a cryogenic program. So Mr. Nambudri was my boss and we started uh, uh, with small 12 people or 12, 13 people. At that time, I have become a little bit in the middle management. So newly recruited, like youngsters like you, they joined with me, almost like 20 engineers, they joined. Today, uh, LPSC director and my energy director, all of them are joined like that on the day in cryogenic with me. Uh, good. They are all <laughs> worked under me for so many years. And uh, why cryo? Maybe this is the, okay, maybe this is the first time I started like my solid propellant with a small uh, 200 gram. 
I started with a single element because here the injector is many elements. So I took only one element and started with gaseous hydrogen and gaseous oxygen. It is not hypergolic, so you require some ignition system. So here and there I you know arranged a small bench, workbench, and put some purchase some gases and injected no ignition. I tried many times, ignition is not at all coming. Finally, there was little ignition came. And uh, ISRO, there is a very good uh, system. Monthly once uh, the director take a review uh, and any new development, you can make a presentation and everybody will listen, everybody can criticize. So I made this presentation, sir, I have done some tests. Uh, you believe it or not, everybody started laughing. What? And they saw the flame, flame and they said, Mr. Gandhi, the roadside, the welding man, the oxyacetylene flame will be better than this. Wouldn't you do proper uh, cryogenic? What? I felt very bad, but still I take it in a very light sense. Good. So what is cryo? So I started searching. So liquid oxygen is required. So where is liquid oxygen? In Trivandrum, it's not there. Then again, the nearest uh, industrial town is Ernoklam. There is a Fedo. Nearby, there was a fertilizer plant. For that, there is a British Oxygen Limited. They have put an oxygen plant. So 84, if I'm right, 84 or 85, I visited the plant and I asked, uh, can I see liquid oxygen? One uh, person was there. He said, where are you from? I said, from Isro. Then he asked it to sit, and I was sitting there. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, nothing came. I was impatient. Then again, I get up and I asked, where can I see that man? Said, Sit down. And later, after half an hour, the double wall uh, test tube in a wooden case, a blue color liquid came. First time in my life I have seen the liquid oxygen. I was uh, thrilled. So immediately I asked, can I carry some 50 kg? So he started laughing, Mr. Gandhi, this is in cryo. The temperature is, I, you know very well, it is very 90 Kelvin. So you cannot do it. You can go to next, Fedo is there. You go and order a stainless steel tank of 50 liter or 100 liter and insulate. We will supply liquid oxygen to you in a DVR. Well, those days, uh, very easy is row. So I went and ordered and went and told my boss, I already ordered the limit. It is for us. Okay, they rectified. So within three months' time, we fabricated a tank. We brought the liquid oxygen. And with the gaseous hydrogen, I fired no ignition. Then all my friends like, you know, this fellow, what he can do with the cryo? Nothing. So like a dog, I was running. People started throwing stone. Somehow I, I went to HAL. I tried to get uh, aircraft igniter and put it here. And finally the flame came. Little beautiful compared to the earlier gas and gas combination. Then I went again to the management and present. This time it's okay, but the hydrogen is still in the gaseous form. So why don't you make it uh, that also full cryo? Good. That's also good. So those days left and right, we import things from Europe and the uh, other places. So I have at that time a lot of good friends in uh, France. I called the uh, air liquid man. Hey, I want some liquid hydrogen. Fine. We are ready to give how much you want. I said about 5 ton or 10 ton, you can send it. He said, no problem, I will send. But only one issue is that when the container comes to Chennai airport, there will not be nothing inside. What? Yeah, every day it will operate at 10% or 5% or 3%. percent like that. So finally, you will not get it. Then what I have to do? He said, you put up a plant in your place. That gave me very interesting. So call my engineers. Come on, let us uh, have... So luckily, uh, that time you are raw as the chairman. So he has a very kind of thought towards me. He has given me a 15 crore free project for uh, cryogenic. So with that money, I started. So uh, all our engineers, we sat. Okay, one thing is we can refrigerate the hydrogen. So lowest number, which refrigerant we have to use? Liquid helium. Where is liquid helium? Then we searched. Then it was available in uh, Delhi in uh, Medical Research Institute, MRM. So you believe it or not, within a week's time, I went there. So in medical college, I was walking. 
not a patient. So I was searching where is the liquid helium plant. They are using the liquid helium for the magnet, the MRI yeah. <laughs> magnet. They want, they are using it. So I went to the plant. There was a technician or a, maybe a diploma engineer. So he asked, uh, I said, I am from ISRO. He explained everything A to Z. That's what I want. So same thing, I repeated, I put the order. So finally, the American, they asked, what for you are buying this? Well, I want to make liquid hydrogen. Then where is hydrogen? Then only I understood, OK, hydrogen is not in the air. I cannot suck the air like liquid oxygen. So what to do? He said, OK, I will give you a water separation plant. You can split the water into oxygen and hydrogen. And hydrogen you can pull with helium. A integrated system I will supply. Fine. So I got the integrated system. Now today also a mini hydrogen plant is still not working, but the plant is there in Mahindra Giri. And uh, like liquid oxygen I have seen, liquid hydrogen I could not see, but I could see the temperature is uh, you know, reading 22 Kelvin. So we thought liquid has come. But to fire the engine, we require a heavy wall, high pressure run tanks. So at those days in India, we don't have run tank of that kind of low temperature on cryogenic. Then once again, I put the you know, floating. Only two people quoted, Mrs. Greisam from Germany and air liquid from France. So finally, we selected the Mrs. Greisam. As per government rule, I am supposed to negotiate and reduce the price. OK, I call. So I called the Mrs. Greisam to Germany. Can you come over here? I want to discuss with you. He said, no. In India, in roads, the elephants and the snakes are there. I will not come. And finally, he has agreed to come up to Mumbai. So I went uh, from Trivandrum with along with my purchase and accounts team. We had a discussion. Finally, he same question he asked, what are you going to do? Fire rocket. He laughed. Mr. Gandhi, you are buying this uh, tank. Uh, even I have seen yesterday somewhere in uh, the hotel, they are making some dosa and the uh, plate is maybe about 200, 300 degrees Celsius. If you pour your uh, batter, it makes sound. Here, you are going to inject cryogenic, immediately it will evaporate and it will get out. Oh, I see. Then what to do? He said, you require, uh, it will continuously it will evaporate for some time. You may not be knowing how much liquid is inside. So what to do? He said, you require a level sensor on the tank. Then immediately asked, why don't you provide that also? He said, that is very costly. Then finally, he said, I can provide a neon trap. What is neon trap? The neon will change its color when liquid hydrogen comes. So you will know that the liquid has come up to 80% of the tank. Well, very nice. So he said, OK, you look like a nice boy. I will provide you free of cost. After four months, the tank reached Mahendra Giri, very close to this uh, facility, what you are uh, uh, seeing. And uh, we made a one-ton engine by the time we fired. You believe it or not, a very big explosion. Why? Then once again, I made uh, we made almost like three or four engines. Out of the three engines exploded violently. Night and day, running here and there. Again, the dog started running and people started throwing, what is this? So much money we have spent, still we could not get a good uh, test. So I was sleeping at my home. My wife asked, uh, you look very tired and uh, you are very much thinking something. I said, yes, my tests are all going bad. Maybe on the day I was thinking, uh, well, this liquid hydrogen is like a Maharaja. It flows on the pipeline when uh, nitrogen or any other uh, dirt is there it will become solid it goes to the filter and block when i open oxygen alone comes and it uh, mixture ratio is very off and it explodes so what to do then i thought even for a maharaja there will be a maharani to control so who is the maharani for hydrogen only thing is helium Unfortunately, helium is not available in India. It is available only again in US. So we imported the helium. We purged the line and fired the rocket. You believe it or not, it was very, 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 very well successful. So everybody was happy. 
so they gave you a pre project and these things they asked us to develop your 12th and engine so maybe you could see here the uh, why we want to go for uh, uh, cryogenic the specific impulse i said if i burn 1 kg it is uh, proportional to the combustion temperature and inversely proportional to the molecular weight if you see the uh, chart chemical chart hydrogen uh, molecular weight is one that's the lowest number so if you use hydrogen you get the maximum specific impulse that's why we are using hydrogen then you may ask you can use gaseous hydrogen why you are going to liquid hydrogen one liter of liquid hydrogen if it evaporates it will be 760 liter of hydrogen so you require a huge tank so it is impossible to carry in rocket in the gaseous form that's why we are going for uh, liquid so this is uh, one so when we started the 12 ton uh, good or bad uh, the russians came and there was a very big meeting in the headquarters in bangalore i was also called and uh, you are always there so one side nearly about 20 or 30 russians so this side all our directors and myself we were all sitting then they said uh, why gandhi you are struggling we are ready to give the technology so well i have also not seen moscow i said fine we will buy technology from russia so 1993 january 16th uh, i was the leader i have taken 25 young engineers to russia and we landed there it was only minus 16 degrees celsius on the day in moscow so we were all shivering so we were given a house many house for 20 people nearly four five houses some embassies arranged so we stayed there and we started working so some of the people, this work is done in three places. One is for the engine, almost like 2,000 kilometers away from Moscow in Ural Mountains in Siberia. And the stage work is in Moscow. And the engine development work is about 40 kilometers from Moscow, Kaliningrad. So I split the engineers into three groups. And I used to go to all the uh, places. In once... <coughs> I, Uskatao, which is, I said, it is in Ural. I went with, because luckily I have one of the translator with me. So we went there and uh, we got down from the train. The train journey itself, very interesting. Some other time I will explain. So we got down, two people, they came here to receive. One old lady is the wife of the deputy director, Mr. Miranso. And one young girl, she is also knowing English. The whole town, or the, I won't say town, it is a village. Only two people only know English. So they have come to pick us and we were taken to a small house. There is no hotel, nothing. So when uh, from the car, I have to walk at least a few meters to reach the house. When I was walking, all of a sudden, uh, nearly about 20 kids, they started running and trying to touch me because I was so black. They thought I have come from some other planet. So I was very happy because in my village, when white man comes, I used to run behind him long, long, long back. So now at least some white kids are running behind me. So I was also happy. So next day I went and visited the plant and uh, I'm not very happy in the sense some of the uh, important things they closed with their tarpaulin and uh, normal lathe and milling machine. They asked me to stand for hours and they explained that I don't want and wherever some places they pushed me fast so two days i was there third day i'm supposed to leave i was not happy if that is the treatment for me how my engineers will take the technology so on the day night they started giving me a party as usual so everybody started taking <coughs> a, a, a toast so they started telling indian baba or something like that. finally they asked me to give you a toast so i got up and said i will tell you a small story in india before marriage we may not we will not see the girl only parents will, will arrange of course i am telling about 50 years back not now so when i went for some one of my friends marriage i was coming back there was opposite some car came my father and my brother was there they asked me to switch over the car so they said on the way we are going to a house uh, there is a girl you are supposed to see uh, you cannot say no and I say, if I cannot say no, why should I come? You yourself, you can finalize. No, no, no. It is only a formality. So you just come and go. Okay. So I went there. You believe it or not, uh, 
came afterwards some film also. The girl come for a second and left. By the time I have seen uh, very little bit, her uh, ear and nose and little bit lips, uh, that's all. By the time the girl vanished. So marriage was after 100 days. So every day, night, I used to integrate her face, how she will look like. So same thing is happening here. You have shown here and there a little bit. I don't know what you are doing in this place. Immediately, the director got reddish. Why? What happening here? And all those things. Then they said they, they, they have not shown me anything. And immediately, the director ordered, you cancel your ticket. Tomorrow, you can come to office. You believe it or not, next day onwards, everything was opened. So I was so happy. So the technology transfer started by some of the Americans are not very happy. So they ordered the Russians not to give the technology to India. So we were prematurely within nine months or eight months or 10 months. I have come back to India. So I made the uh, project report and submitted to our director and sent it to uh, government. Government was kind enough to give 300 crore project in 95. And I was the first project director to carry out the cryo uh, work. And this is the cryo engine built. And you could see the here the injectors are all different. Both uh, fuel and oxidizer will swirl and come out like a fan. What you are seeing with the water, we are testing it. Very interesting. These facilities be established in Mahendragri. And very interestingly, you know, hydrogen, even though we are storing, while injecting in the combustion chamber, it should be in the gaseous form. So regeneratively, it is double wall. So combustion chamber and up to area ratio 14, it will be a copper inside, outer is stainless steel, and the divergent is divergent is SS and SS. So bracing by technology is joined uh, together. So you could see the copper chamber, it is milled. So why I am showing this figure is when I was in Uskatao, the deputy director, Mr. Miranso, told, if you could make this chamber, I will resign from this job. So those days, there is no this thing. So by facts, I send this photo. In the bottom, I have written, you need not resign from your job. This took a lot of time for me to develop. Then uh, the outer is a SS. It is braced under uh, vacuum condition. In, in between the channel and outside uh, organ pressure and the temperature is 1160 and the whole job has to be rotated. So I have paid almost like six crore to Godrej Mumbai. The facility was uh, built. You could see this one. Still it is working. And uh, first component, I was there for one month at least. So everything was braced. We take it out. You believe it or not. The stainless steel has cracked like a mirror. So Lord, at that time, the chairman was different and he formed a committee and all those things. So many things happened and finally we rectified. And this is the turbo pump. Very interesting compared to earlier what you were saying. Because here it is a single shaft. The Russians, they have designed. One side is a powder metallistic rotor, single rotor. And with hydrogen 20 Kelvin and LOX is in 90 Kelvin. So all the materials is experiencing range of you know temperatures and thermostructural analysis and all those things they are carried out with a lot of uh, professors uh, from even including TKM and uh, Anna University and IIT Mumbai. All the professors I involved, I have given small, small projects for them to carry out. Here in the bearings, we cannot use regular grease. So because otherwise this will freeze. So the respective fluid only will be cooling the bearings. So the lot of complications are there. Even one full day we require to talk about the turbo pump. So this is the chamber. The first integrator, this complete assembly I have given to Anna City students. They have done the, those days 3D model just started in uh, Anna City. So I have given this model to them. They have built this one for integrating purpose. So out of 300 crore, 100 crore I gave to Mahendragri to build the test facility. And uh, this is by the time I said I have put a mini hydrogen plant. This is a 50 crore uh, hydrogen plant. So from NAFTA, we cracked the NAFTA and produced the hydrogen. And hydrogen is purified and then cooled with the air, uh, liquid air or liquid nitrogen. 
and then with the Joule Thomson effect, it is uh, sprayed and you get liquid hydrogen. This plant is still working. And now we have one more plant at Tanku in Andhra Pradesh. And there they have the fertilizer plant and hydrogen is the byproduct. That hydrogen is taken with the helium cycle. We are cooling it. So now currently for ISRO, there are two liquid hydrogen plants. So this is the test facility we built. And you could see the test stand and behind white color LNG. And right side is the liquid hydrogen and left side two tanks for locks. And all the cylinders and the evaporators and all those things, this itself is costing almost like a pro. So this is the instrumentation facility. Nearly about uh, 600 to 700 parameters we have to measure on the engine itself, 200 parameters and the test facility and all those things. So we have different console and we sit here and we monitor the test. And you could see the uh, test. And this is the first, uh, not the first cryo engine success, maybe this in 2002 and uh, I was there and maybe uh, this test take me to uh, slightly uh, this thing. Maybe later a semi cryo also started. Now currently ISRO is developing a 200 ton semi cryo engine and uh, with liquid oxygen and kerosene. And of course we are doing liquid oxygen with methane, not methane, LNG. Of course LNG is 85% methane. So this 200 ton is currently uh, ISRO is uh, developing. Maybe in few years, they will replace the Vikas engine with uh, this uh, solid motor. Towards the end of my life, I love hydrogen too much. So I thought the hydrogen, you need not burn it. Even if you heat and expand, the ISP will be around 900 seconds. Where to heat? So I have given this proposal. So you can have a small nuclear uh, reactor and you, through that, if you send the hydrogen, and no oxygen is required to heat it and the expand and you required only a liquid hydrogen tank this i presented to barc maybe in 2003 or 2002 well i prepared a 40 page report everybody said it's good but uh, maybe they are waiting for youngsters like you you can start this work also in isro and after my retirement i have spent nearly about 300 crore of a common man I want to use the hydrogen for somewhere to come and man. So I was searching how to use the hydrogen. One area is the running the automobiles with the hydrogen through fuel cell route. Tata is uh, interested to do that. So Tata gave five crore and our government gave me one crore. So after retirement, I put a small lab in Bangalore, ISRO. So Tata people, they gave me five, six engineers. So combinedly, we did buying the first uh, fuel cell from Ballard, Canada, about 120 kilowatt. And uh, I was in charge for the hydrogen system and uh, sending it and all those things. You may be knowing the fuel cell when the hydrogen goes, the proton exchange membrane is called nafion. Nafion is nothing but a modified uh, proton, uh, sorry, <coughs> PTFE with a sulfonic compound. So in the catalyst is the noble metal. So hydrogen uh, electrons are stripped and uh, coming out in the electrical circuit. And the air is pumped on the other side. It uh, combined with the oxygen, so only water. So no pollution. So 2005, sorry, 15, I run the bus. Uh, this is the small lab uh, in Mahindragiri we have kept. And this is the bus I have run in 2005. And uh, right side uh, with the specs is Mr. Dr. Raja. He is the manager from uh, this thing. And uh, in front of him is the director now earlier, Mr. Alan Velu. And he was also working with me. So this is only after my retirement work. So after this work and uh, one of uh, ISRO, at the time I used to go for a lot of reviews. One day in, the, uh, in my <coughs> staying in the guest house, one gentleman called, can I meet you? I said, yes, his name is Pavan. So he came and met me. I want to start a startup. And you should, yeah, why don't you be our advisor? Because everybody said you have done a lot of work on cryo and other things. I said, uh, what are you going to do with <laughs> I was laughing. But he explained later what is his plan. I was astonished. I joined with them in uh, four years back in Skyroot. 
so these are all his plans so first one is uh, uh, vikram series vikram 1 2 3 vikram 1 is a three stage solid fourth stage is the liquid i am working on the fourth stage and uh, next vikram 2 520 kg uh, payload third stage sorry fourth stage is again a cryo and liquid oxygen and lng liquefied natural gas which is 85 percent methane so both currently i am working on n 4 udmh uh, regenerative cooled uh, engine and both this is the solid side as i said the carbon p600 they were used for solid propellant these are all my work you could see the injector on the top in the middle it's a titanium uh, 3d printed injector Normally, in his role, it may be having about 30 to 40 components. Everything integrated in single piece. You could see here, this is my, I will say this is, I'm very proud to put this injector and it has worked very well in both the uh, uh, N204 and UDMH. Only single piece, no thread, nothing, everything is cleaned. And the fabrication time is very less and within two days, you will get maybe of course nowadays it takes about a week because they want to clean and x-ray and all those things and uh, these are all the tests we have done and now currently the cryo what i said uh, uh, with uh, 3d printing the combustion chamber is ready now if everything goes well already i have fired one thousand newton engine now currently i am working on two thousand newton that is the requirement for the uh, vikram 2 so this engine is ready we have assembled we have done everything and uh, maybe friday or saturday i'm planning to do a uh, next series of tests with the uh, 2000 newton this is the test facility we built in skyroot and uh, i guided under me now almost like 20 engineers like you people are sitting i don't know tremendously i'm happy with them everybody is you know fingertips they have the knowledge of you know uh, software, these CAD CAM, 3D model, anything if I tell, uh, they are doing it very fast and thermal analysis, fluid analysis, whatever it is. And I'm very happy to work with my engineers. Good. I think these are all my, <laughs> this thing. Maybe you are all young. I thought one few slides I would like to share. And uh, this is one I have taken long back when I was there in France in 1975. Of course, now this is available in now internet also. And uh, a man wants to build a small swing. The project specified is like the first one. The division understood. The engineers normally, you know, they are a little <coughs> conservative. They don't want anything to be failed. So they put the swing on the ground itself so that no issue. And the production man thought, anyhow, it has to swing. So he has taken a rope. And uh, so the integrator thought, anyhow, it has to swing. So he cut the tree and put on both sides. So it, the swing is now moving. All these things happening because improper communication in the starting of the project. The what required is a simple swing on the right side. So nowadays I have seen people will uh, next they will be sitting, but still he will send through the mail only uh, these things. So instead of that, hopefully you can talk to him and express and all those things. It will be good. So I request you when you are going for work, spend some time to understand what is the requirement. Maybe this is the, when you are working, don't uh, work for the boss. Boss is coming, kindly do something. This lady is telling, no, you are paid and for your own, this thing you have to work. And I always love to have teamwork. I will not say this is my, I only did it. It is a fully a teamwork. Always a teamwork helps. I have collected, you know, I, as I said, throughout the engineering college, I might have visited those days and discussed with the professors and solving the, why should I do everything myself? So we distributed and kind of thing. So the teamwork is very essential. Sometimes it may happen in your life. You are the only person you may be doing. There may be some six, seven people may be overseeing you. Maybe you may say project manager or don't worry about all those things because you have to work hard. The diamond will be somewhere here. Don't get, you know, uh, I fed up and uh, return. You work hard, definitely you will reach the goal. 
and this is my normally i will put this slide when you break a egg with your hand yeah chick dies inside but if a egg breaks of its own your life begins so all of you i request and you yourself you know it is not for somebody to tell you to do just to come from your own mind i have to do something for the country i have to do something for the science i have to do something to for my neighbor i have to keep something i have to do some help so like that if you think the life will be more pleasant and good thank you for listening for a long time and uh, i have put uh, three years back this cup was made now i am 78 so i am not 75 i am only 18 i have put with 57 or 60 year experience now thank you very much for listening and uh, thank you once again Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, audience, have any questions to ask? Yeah, kindly. Uh, please don't leave the meeting. Uh, if you have anything to ask. Okay. Okay. No questions. Good morning, you can sir. Ask Good evening, sir. Huh? Good evening, sir. Yeah. One minute, one minute. I'll come back. Hello? Yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, sir. You are, you are audible. Okay. Yeah. Please ask me a question. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Yeah. First of all, uh, very grateful to be part of this talk, and it was very inspirational one. And my question is, uh, sir, uh, what do you think are the most exciting development in the aerospace industries right now? And what are you uh, what are you personally most excited about? Well, uh, there are two three things. Very good question. Now. But I explained the bracing technology, joining the outer and inner, copper to this one. It took a lot of time and uh, painful time. Now, the technology has improved to 3D printing and uh, directly, maybe with the laser or electron beam and uh, direct deposition. There are many new techniques have come. So that is uh, one. I feel it is, uh, you know, it is giving a very big, uh, boom for the engineers because very complicated shapes and uh, uh, difficult to machine can be easily printed that too with uh, super alloys like uh, inconel 718 or uh, titanium or stainless steel whichever material you want uh, the technology has come uh, very handy so in fabrication and hardware realization that is a very big boom that is my first, uh, this one. Now, the second one is uh, people, well, those days we worked with N204 and uh, UDMH, which is not <coughs> environment friendly. Both are not good for uh, humans and the vegetations or uh, even for atmosphere. So people are looking for uh, green propellant like LNG or uh, uh, cryo, uh, full cryo. So if I, why I have switched over from LH2 to uh, LNG, LH2, if I want to produce to one kg is nearly about 4,000 to 5,000 rupees. But the LNG is only 200 rupees. So for a private company, if I, everybody is looking for per kilo of the payload, if you want to put in the orbit, how much it will cost. So we have to reduce the cost of the launch vehicle so everybody is working on towards that so that's why we selected this lng is the latest tradition now even every country is uh, working on that so this is also new revolutionary type in, in addition to that one more area very interestingly is coming is the debris are all very high in the uh, space 
nearly about 3 million species above 5 millimeter size is roaming around so countries are all together to even catalog it and monitoring it and getting clearance at the time of launch cleaning of those things now many countries they have taken even including swiss and japanese they are paying more attention so there are nine or ten techniques they are there by you know uh, maybe if you go to the uh, google and search for the cleaning of space there are nine or ten technique techn techniques are available by spraying water or uh, uh, heating the space or magnetic uh, net so many techniques are there so that is also one of the new area where uh, uh, people are very much interested to do the uh, work uh, another area is going for very high pressure <clears throat> for example i said we are doing only for 60 bar and people are going to 200 bar and very high pressure if you go to very high pressure the engine size will become very small it is easy to 3d printing and all those things so that is one more area turbo pump and other areas a lot of improvements they are uh, making it and uh, another area i am amazed is uh, tourism uh, you might have already seen and uh, the vertical takeoff it is very interesting you go only up to 200 to 50 kilometers and see the earth uh, blue color and how it rotates and other things and you can come down so uh, maybe uh, many people may be interested not much uh, like uh, space man uh, going on centrifuge and other things training and all those things without much like aircraft you are going one day in spacecraft also you will get in and then go to the space and come back or you may go to other countries and land it may come very fast uh, this is what uh, i feel but there are uh, interesting talks on uh, colonization of moon and uh, mars and other thing i am not very confident maybe you instead you may develop something i'm not uh, very i i don't want to say it is impossible because anything you leave on uh, moon it will immediately disappear into the space because there is no atmosphere uh, there because of the low g and other thing so even if you want to make a atmosphere it is not going to stay there so how long you will be inside a tent uh, maybe we have to search a planet which has maybe mars which has co2 maybe methane and other things we are they are trying maybe that's why they are now leaving the moon and they are planning to go for mars mars one difficulty is to reaching that place with the current technology of even with the nuclear and the speed and all those things the distances are so high to reach there it may take more than three or four months time so what will you eat what will you do what are the things and uh, that is another uh, problem so for that maybe you might have seen avatar uh, film they freeze you in a <laughs> container and again you can come back to the life may it may come then in that case you can send uh, uh, frozen tissues like a human can be frozen and he can come out to life after six months possible uh, these are all the issues connected with the traveling i am also interested maybe you youngsters we might have learned a lot and uh, these are all the areas i find uh, important maybe once upon a time they were planning to do killing the uh, spacecraft because the war golden days it was only by uh, you know in the ground with uh, manpower and hearts and elephants and then the aircrafts now satellites and once now it will become totally you kill the spacecraft your enemy will be stopped so how to kill the uh, spacecraft is by laser uh, long distance if you could uh, so that also chinese they are trying even once and even americans and many people they are trying to do so that is also another area we have to be much more careful on uh, how to deal with the uh, satellites the killing and other things okay any other questions sir uh, i have noticed a trend where in like aeronautical engineering yeah usually the certification methods are very stringent 
and safety is prioritized so much but when it comes to astronautical there is it is more of risk taking and innovation so what are your views on how important safety and innovation is when it comes to building new technology yeah it is very important i agree in space in uh, aircraft industries avionics uh, you are dealing with the humans even if a rocket fails it is not uh, uh, okay maybe 400 crore we lose but not a human being but in the aircraft if any problem even uh, long back even a small bolt failed a engine fall down in dc5 in us and uh, killing so many people so aircraft the engine has to run hours and hours and hours and hours in rocket it is in minutes maybe maximum half an hour or 4000 seconds our lamp fired is the maximum time so hours and hours are working in restarting so the reliability should be very high because it carries nearly about 300 400 people at a time so that is more important stringent rules and regulations are still required but one day we are nowadays following so many norms like ghost norm or din or this thing maybe we have to one day aluminum alloy is also people are looking for slightly more advanced materials maybe like uh, t6 600 maybe later instead of aluminum they may the aircraft may become a carbon uh, <laughs> fiber also so that lightweight and it can fly and uh, in addition to that engine they are looking now even though russia wants it they have run with uh, hydrogen engine also in the aircraft so like that uh, there are many ways but uh, i am not uh, sure the stringency in norms may not come down soon for the aircraft because even with all those uh, thing we had fair problems and uh, sometimes it is not uh, landing properly sometimes fly by wire uh, also failed once in bangalore and it crashes and killed more than 300 people so it is not only mechanical side in the electronic side also it is uh, has to be done and one thing now in private company when i, I am currently working in when i was there in uh, uh, isro some of the components they said radiation hardened and kind of thing and uh, so much complications they have made for the electronics component now because this high cost and now they have relaxed a little bit on the uh, uh, quality of the not the quality and uh, so many tests may not be done those things we are once again we are relaxing a little bit on the electronics component i can say and uh, maybe golden days uh, even on solid rocket motor when we want to fly minimum 4 5 successfully we have to test in the ground then only we allow now sslv now recently isro only one hard test ground they have done next test they have flown successfully even our uh, uh, <coughs> sky route also we fly tested on rocket this is only a second <laughs> only one test only ground we tested so that much confidence why because of the youngsters now everything can be simulated and the ground itself you can have the cfd analysis and uh, thermal analysis everything is uh, possible so we can easily say it will fail or not fail so that way we are blessed maybe after some time some relaxation may come yeah anybody okay somebody has asked what is the motivation in aerospace well <laughs> i don't have any such those days aeros uh, this thing because those in no work i got the job i joined and i have the passion to work i love the work and that is now i say uh, originally when we were studying only three basic uh, engineering mechanical electrical and civil uh, then uh, electrical uh, so these are all the three forms then only even when i was studying for year only electronics came in one or two colleges in tamil nadu maybe later nowadays uh, varieties 
uh, aviation those who are taking i those some people they have joined with me also i have seen they are very good in uh, uh, in calculating the flight dynamics and uh, uh, drag these that even the first time itself you might have seen our flight went very successful because of the youngsters they have done a wonderful job but one point i will say is so many aerospace uh, colleges they have opened that much demand is not there that i have to openly have to tell uh, because mechanical and electronics still it is uh, thriving aerospace also good demand is there in uh, drdl and isro and uh, uh, private company like us and even foreign country and other thing but i have seen uh, when i go to any engineering college for something every college is having aerospace so that much whether we have demand i i am having a small doubt otherwise aerospace engineering is one of the best to study and come out okay thank you thank you very much for uh, listening if any questions you can uh, my email id i have given anybody has any uh, doubt or anything any time you can call me i will be available for youngsters thank you thank you very much thank you sir uh, can you hold on a minute sir thank you sir yeah yeah uh, please before that uh, the feedback feedback form has been shared in the comment box you need to fill that in order to get the certificate okay okay thank you thank you very much <laughs> and i am very thank happy you, sir, all uh, kerala <laughs> because uh, when i joined uh, there was uh, from kodamangalam there was uh, because when i joined engineering college in our college there was no girl student so we are so much disappointed but when i joined in engineer uh, in isro from kodamangalam first uh, set of uh, girls they joined along with me same batch 1968 and uh, so that is good and uh, i am seeing so many uh, girls studying engineering i appreciate i it's good uh, trend for uh, our community and for our growth thank you thank you all for your uh, thank you sir for such an innovative thank you and motivate thank session. you very much bye bye on be half of these those who are present here i would like the session was engagement and we were able to learn lot from this learn more about was space technology many of the space aspirant could know more about cryogenic system project and motivation story with apj abdul kalam sir i hope all remember kalam sir for a few minutes of the to it all those aspirants who joined today here have become isr of in and become stronger the conclusion of our day three with the successful ending uh, thank you sir for the amazing and uh, interesting motivational session uh, can't wait for meeting of all tomorrow for another session, uh, uh, session by ajay thank sir you. scientist at tbs Uh, signing off for today thank, thank you. you all thank have you. a nice day thank you bye bye